you know what? We'll just go ahead and do this as a video as well. We're already here. Let's go ahead and see exactly in his own words what Jamal Bowman says about trans people. We'll play the video. And I just want to ask a simple question. Why can't we leave trans people alone? Let them be who they are. Let them live their lives. Let's stop discriminating against them simply because they are different from we, who we are and different than what we understand. There, that in, in 20 seconds, there's two, there's two minutes and 17 seconds of this video, but in 20 seconds, I feel like that already answers that question really well. Now, granted, I'm gonna watch the rest of the video, but in just 20 seconds, hey, why are we fucking with these people? They are people. They are different than, than us, and that doesn't mean anything. Cool. You know who else is different? White and black people. You know who else is different? Guys and gals. You know who else is different? Uh, your brother, sister, father, mother, uh, all of them. Everybody's different. So why do we use that as a basis to get mad at people? Anyway, let's continue. Just because we don't understand it doesn't mean we shouldn't support the trans gender community and love them in the same way we should love all human beings. They're not bothering anyone. They want to go to school. They want to play sports. They want to hang out with their friends. They want to live their lives. Let them live their lives. We have an ugly history of discriminating against people who are different than we are. See? That... Look! Look, it's right there! Like, I don't need to go and find some random strange quote, like, in, embedded in a wiki to find his stance on these issues. I can just go to a random video and just click it and hear exactly from the horse's mouth where we're at. Throughout our time in this country, whether they are Black, Latino, Asian, LGBTQ, poor, people with disabilities, women. We have an ugly history of discrimination in this country. And now the trans community is the target. All they want to do is live their lives. Why are Republicans so uncomfortable with this? Let them be who they are. That's it. They're not bothering you. They're not taking your lunch money. They're not criminalizing your communities. They're not engaging in gun violence. They just want to live and be happy like everyone else. Now, I know there's going to be somebody who uh, comments like, you know, the dick that they are. They're going to comment, what about the recent trans shooters? Yeah. I'm sorry, but every single demographic has people who are bad in it. If I find a few bad white people, does that mean all the white people are bad? Because I can find quite a few of them. And they are contributing members to society, whether it's through education, sports, the economy, or anything else. What the heck are, who are we as Americans and as a human race to be so darn uncomfortable with an individual or group of people that's different from who we are. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna go ahead and include that in the actual video itself. That's Jamal Bowman. Anyway, we need to talk real quick about what is happening here in a little bit of time. In fact, actually, specifically June 22nd and 23rd. If you did not know already, June 22nd and 23rd, I am actually going to be in Yonkers for a canvassing event for Jamal Bowman. Uh, he is a uh, Democratic politician who actually managed to knock away a 16 turn incumbent republican politician and that's huge that's like i don't know if you understand how hard it is to actually get rid of an incumbent during an election year it's hard for the president it's really hard for people at a local level generally speaking and 
he managed to do it. So we are going to, me and a bunch of other content creators are going to be at a canvassing event in Yonkers, New York on June 22nd and 23rd. If you do not know uh, if you can make it, that's entirely fine. But if you can make it, then hey, you're going to be able to see me and a bunch of other people actually go out and not only talk to people about politics like we normally do, but actually do the work of canvassing actually go and for me i'm going to be talking door to door with people seeing who they're going to be voting for and trying to get more of the people who are local to vote for jamal bowman and as for why i'm doing this i think that one people should be more politically involved. I've made comments about this on my channel. I've gone down to my own capital to make comments to politicians about stuff that I've disagreed with. I think that if you are in the United States, you should be politically involved in some way, whether it's just by voting or by actually taking time to talk with your representatives so that they know what your personal needs are. Those are things that you should be doing said when is his election so as with any election at all you have the ability to go if you are a a local of that area you can look up your election times on your local government's website it'll also tell you where you have to vote and it's different for everyone there's a different election day there's a different election place depending on where you are in your district but as for the other reason why I'm doing this, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about Jamal Bowman and why I'm actually comfortable doing this. So the things that he tries to fight for the most as of right now are reducing the school to prison pipeline. As of right now, you know that especially in lower income areas, uh, areas that have a lot of black children tend to have issues where the kids go to an underfunded school and then lack the education to function properly in our society that's already really predatory to people who don't make enough money. Uh, I did an entire video, two videos actually, on the minimum wage and why it's not enough to actually support anyone, a family, yourself. No matter what you do, you cannot survive off of minimum wage. So what happens when you take a young person uh, who gets out of school and is thrust into society they end up having to turn to crime because it's one of the only ways that they can actually survive. In fact, almost everybody at one point can probably point out at some point where they have had to, I don't know, uh, be a little a little more handsy uh, with a soda machine or with grabbing condiments for food or any number of things. You've been hungry and you've decided, fuck it, it's better for me to try to survive than it is for me to follow every single rule. Whether or not you've done that, not my concern. The point is, a lot of people have thought about doing so, and they've thought about doing so because our current system does not support them. It doesn't have a minimum wage that is enough to survive off of. So this ends up leading people to get arrested for shoplifting, arrested for trying to make a better life for themselves by going into drug dealing, and then they end up in prison, and then their lives are kind of over. They're stuck in a loop. Because even after they get out of prison, now they're a felon, and now the types of jobs they can get are greatly reduced compared to what they were prior to prison. So now they have to go back to those lower income jobs where the likelihood of them getting out of that economic situation is even lower, and now they have to turn back to crime to survive as inflation devours them whole. And... That's one of the things that Jabal Moment has been very passionate about, and he's trying to work on. He's also trying to help with our flawed immigration system. We have a ton of issues with how it functions that I'll get into in a second. Um, also, mental health issues. He's trying to work on reforming the way that we currently uh, have our mental health institutions in general. So right now, people who suffer from mental health issues do not have proper access to medication, do not have proper access to therapy, do not have proper access to any kind of professional help. And he's trying to 
help with that by being an advocate for things like single-payer health care. And if that weren't enough, he's also trying to help solve the homelessness crisis in the United States. We've got a shit ton of empty homes and uh, a lot of people who need to actually be in a home where they will not be on the street and getting sick and harming themselves and falling into the prison pipeline cycle as well. All in all, generally, he seems to be a pretty decent guy and a pretty decent politician. He's also spoken out against the slaughter of innocent civilians in the Gaza Strip. And that's where we've got to talk about something else in regards to Jamal Bowman. Um, so $35 million so far have been donated by the American-Israeli PAC, or APAC, uh, to Jamal Bowman's opponent a lot of money has been spent by israel who is currently in the process of killing shit tons of gazan civilians palestinian civilians they are spending millions of their own dollars or at least a pack in the united states that is associated with them is spending millions of dollars to try to make sure that jamal bowman does not get elected because having pro-Palestinian voices in Congress is something that they do not want to happen. They want every single politician to basically be lockstep and key with what Israel is doing for lots of reasons. They're a trade partner with the United States, and they, I guess they just didn't learn their lesson from the Holocaust very well. So, you know, here, here we are. Apparently, never letting it happen again is... um is doing it to Palestinian civilians by doing shit like what they did to uh, Rafa. So Bowman has spoke out against that, and that has caused him to be on the shit list of these packs. So he's not on my shit list because of that. As for major reasons why we should be trying to support him, again, he has the history of winning against a 16-year incumbent. As I've already said, he supports single-payer health care. He didn't support the overturning of Roe v. Wade by the recent Supreme Court. Wants to expand federal safety nets for people. Wants to tax the rich by implementing a wealth tax. Supports economic intervention uh, abroad, like supporting Gaza and Ukraine. Doesn't want to protect government officials like police from personal liability. Yeah, police having to actually be accountable for the shit they do. Weird, right? That's actually kind of fucking based. Not even gonna lie. Continuing from there, he also doesn't want to overspend on the United States military since we do have one of the most overbloated military packages of all time. So don't write it, we'll do it live. <laughs> yeah, true. Also, he supports tax incentives to stimulate economic growth. So having tax incentives for corporations so that they would be more willing to, say, hire more employees instead of currently using the tax loopholes they use to have understaffed, overworked, underpaid employees. He also supports affordable housing plan expansions right now. As I said before, he is trying to do what he can to help work against the homelessness crisis we have in the United States. And one of the ways that you help with that is making sure that housing is affordable people, uh, affordable to people, not not housing is affordable people. You're not living in a house of people. But uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, like I also said, in the United States, we have far more houses than we do people and yet somehow we still have people who are having to be on the streets if you've ever actually gone to say like the tent societies over in uh boston it's it's kind of insane not in boston uh well actually yeah boston as well boston has them too uh atlanta has them as well but one of the biggest ones that i can remember was when i was over on the west coast yeah, no, Portland was the one. Portland was the one where there was a, a, like, a lot of the public transportation areas also morphed into tent cities because people can't afford houses. And a lot of those people were effectively refugees from California wildfires. So, like, I know that he can't, uh, he can't fix that stuff that far away from where he's trying to be representative, but being part of 
change in a small location can actually ripple things out as more politicians see plans like that and go, oh, maybe we can actually fix our problems instead of putting a whole bunch of hostile architecture up everywhere. Uh, he also supports stricter gun control, making it harder for people to just get whatever gun they want willy-nilly. There's a lot of loopholes that people have with like gun shows right now they're able to utilize also, he supports government regulating prescription costs, which is huge. The fact that there are some medications that they can just go, yeah, no, this one pill, $200, die. I just, no, that's stupid. That's a stupid part of our system that we've needed to change for a long time. The, uh, the insurance black book, I, I'm not going to explain the insurance black book here in detail, but let's just go ahead and say the people who decide what your prescription should cost uh, are not the doctors and it's not the people who are paying for it. It's the insurance companies themselves, the people who are spending the money on the prescription through the insurance. They get to set those prices with hospitals and pharmaceutical companies. That feels intuitively like that should be the way it works, but in practice, it means that certain medications and procedures end up costing thousands of dollars when they shouldn't for no reason. Uh, and then we end up relying on the private sector to take over and provide affordable versions and generic versions of certain medications, which sometimes works and sometimes does not. Uh, hey, recently Walmart had to make their own insulin and that was something I was actually all on board for because regardless of how much I hate that company, I have family who are diabetic and I'm perfectly happy when they're able to, you know, afford fucking living anyway as for other stuff that he supports he wants to regulate indirect campaign financial contributions from PACs and uh and disassociated unions uh this again it to parse what this is it's effectively getting money out of politics because right now, if you are a politician in one state, a bunch of PACs can send a bunch of money to your campaign to not only get you elected, but also give incentives for you to do things that those interest groups want. This is why something like, say, what Progressive Victory is doing is a lot more grassroots. There's not a lot of money involved here. We're basically getting the, the barest of minimum things taken care of just so that we can get people out there and talking to real people, people who are somewhat skilled at speaking because we are streamers. Hi, looking at myself, uh, I, am, I am willing to accept that that's one of the few skills that I may or may not have. This lets us go out there and actually talk with people, people who are interested in politics, people who do want to see the world change and don't want to just sit in their house and rock back and forth and doomerism. Oh, also, I mentioned before that he is trying to fix our flawed immigration system from how he can in the House of Representatives. So to that end, one of the last things that I have on my list of things that I wrote out uh, for me to talk about, because I'm not going to lie, I was handed uh, some stuff like this piece right here to show for this, you know, presentation on this. But I personally did not want to look at all of that. I wanted to go to other sources to see how has this guy voted? What things has he spoken out against? What has he done? Because that's what I've done with every politician ever. And I wasn't about to change how I did that now. So what did I find there? Well, he actually supports keeping immigrant families together during the citizenship process. So right now, if you have a family that is that has uh, people in it who have immigrated from another country uh, and they are in the process of getting citizenship, which can sometimes take about 10 years. I did a video on that ages ago. If one person from that family hit, uh, gets hit with an expiration notice during this process, that family can actually get split up across the border where the children are in limbo and the let's say the wife uh, has only been in the middle of the immigration process for a few weeks or a few months and the father has been in for longer or, you know, just in general, even if you start at the same time, there's no guarantee that you both are going to get approved either at all or at the same time. The United States sometimes just deports half the family and sends them back to whichever country that they believe they came from. They don't always get it right. Um, and then you, 
You get families that are split up over effectively bureaucratic red tape. Bowman doesn't seem to be in favor of that, so he's trying to find ways to keep those families together and fix our currently broken immigration system. But anyways, that's the guy that I'm going to be going up to support up in Yonkers. If you want to get involved as well, Progressive Victory is most likely going to be looking for volunteers up there. If you would like to volunteer your time, I'll be up there along with a lot of other content creators. I can't quite say who all is going to be there off of my off the top of my head because not every content creator who's on the list that I was sent uh, has said that they will or will not be able to make it yet. But I can tell you that I'm going to be up there. And maybe that'll be enough. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Hit the like button if you haven't already. And as always, everybody, insert end of video tagline here. Hey, I just quickly want to give a thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who keep this show running. YouTube and Twitch are a pretty bumpy ride at the best of times, and the stability a Patreon provides me is worth more than I can say here. I'd also like to thank each and every one of my $20 and up patrons here, and they would be Red Joker, Britzkrieg, Cameron, Dren, Gemshin, Smiling DM, Poundini, Mabity Babity, Naomi, Isaac, Nixie Chan, The Oberon Team, Agamotto, Jordan, Ravi, Juni, Kiratorian, Prisma, all of you, Sagitta, I'm not saying that part, and Starlight. And finally, thank you to everyone else that helps keep this channel alive. While you're here, why not check out another video? And thank you for watching.